Hello, welcome to Yellow Door Urban Homestead. I am Asia and I'm an urban gardener growing in a small space out in my backyard. So today, I wanted to come on here and make a video. I am a day late <laughs> and I didn't post Wednesday. And I just wanted to say thank y'all so much for checking on me. Um, so it has been a long week. Like last week, Monday to Friday was very long. Um, and so I did not come on here. I have not even been posting on Instagram. Like it was a long week. Um, but I appreciate y'all checking on me because that makes me feel really good that y'all are like, are you okay? I hope everything's all right. Um, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> just been a long work week so I'm back I'm back and so the last time I think that I made a video I was showing you how I plan for the next season of growing and so today I'm going to show you everything that I do plan to grow um, and so we can you know start getting started because it is February and so if you remember I said that I was gonna plant my plants out the weeks out from when I was gonna plant out and I plan to plant out in May uh, mostly because I don't want to have to baby seedlings for a very long time also Vivor sent us something that's going to help with that I'm so excited about that um, we'll probably see that in the next video or the video after next but I'm very excited about it um, we're gonna be doing some changes outside for the 2024 growing season all of which I think are going to be amazing for the urban garden. Um, and so very excited about that. But today we're going to talk about all the seeds that I plan on growing. And I have ordered seeds. So in the last video, I wrote down the seeds that I don't have. So I ordered them from Baker Creek. Um, I got a strictly medicinal catalog. Um, I didn't even realize they had a catalog. So I'm very excited to look through that and see what they have. Because I do want to start growing more medicinal plants but I feel like I need to get my normal things started, the things that I know how to you know, get started, I know how to plant, and then we're gonna work on medicinals. Um, I have a very long growing season. It's the quail. <laughs> I have a very long growing season, and so I'm okay to kind of start things a little bit later. And with a lot of medicinal plants, they are perennial. So I feel like I have time. I'm gonna wait on those. I'm not going to push myself. Um, so look what I found, y'all. I found this at Target. I thought it was so cute and so perfect. So while I was saying that I didn't have my actual garden notebook yet, I found it. It says never stop growing. I thought it was so cute and perfect for the situation. So this is what I'm going to start using to plan. Like I said, I'm gonna draw out my garden outside so I know where I'm gonna plant things, know how much space I have, but this is gonna be it. And I got it from Target, so excited. The other thing that I am working on this week and I will be videoing is switching anything that's in here over into here. So this is my 2023 calendar, um, well, planner. And so I'm gonna use that, of course, as my blueprint for this calendar so that I can start to plan out the garden, which I've already done, but I still have more that I need to do. And it's not, like you don't have to do that, but I want to make sure that I have things planted when they should be. Also, I want to make sure that I succession sow a little bit better this year. So if you remember last year, I ended up planting out beans a little later in the season on a trellis and they went all the way until the frost. Like I just left them and they kept producing. I kind of want to do the same thing with my tomatoes. So like last year, I tried to do it with the suckers and it did work. But I think that I just want to start new plants. So um, the plan is like, Let's say when I go to plant out in May, in June or July, I'm going to start more tomato plants. That way, when the hot weather starts to come in and the plants are looking bad, I have some replacements. Um, same thing with like zucchini and, and, and squash, because I never do very well with them. I still want to be able to have them started to replace them. So that is my biggest reason for having this notebook and using the planner. My planner is also for my life. So it's not like I just got a planner for gardening. I use it for my life too. A very busy life. 
So here's one thing that I like. There's a few things I finally checked the post office box and I know someone else sent something else because I have a small post office box, but if there's a box that's larger, they put this yellow card in it. So I don't have yours yet, um, but I will go get it sometime this week. I'm very excited, very happy, very honored, like um, humbled that you all are sending me things at all. But this right here came from a place called Valerie Fish Glass Art. And it was in my post office box actually probably a week or two ago. I've been had it, but I didn't have, you know, have a chance to come on here. It is so beautiful. Or I didn't remember to mention it. It is so pretty. It's like a pretty little um lotus and i love lotus flowers and it is purple so there was so much attention paid to this and i love it so much so if you are the person who sent me this i am absolutely loving it i'm trying to figure out where i'm gonna hang it i want to hang it somewhere outside in the garden because i think it's so beautiful i have a lotus on my wrist and somebody sent me that so thank you so much and i got some collard cabbage collard seeds I was talking about how I had never grown them before and someone sent me some. I grew some this year, but they came from my local feed and seed store and I actually like them. They seemed like they had much softer leaves. Um, and so I really did like those. And then you also sent me some early Jersey uh, cabbage and this is from Plant Plug. Plant plug vibes. So I appreciate you sending that to me. I really do. And then someone shared some of their save seeds with me. They're for yellow peppers. And I just think it's so sweet. I think it's so sweet that you all take out time to send me things. And I appreciate every last thing that you send me. So the other thing is, um, I noticed that people are starting to get their loofah seeds. Very excited about that. Still working on the second group. So just remember, if you sent a message and said, like, I'd like to have some seeds or do you have seeds left? I do. But you got to send me your address because I'm only one person. And I don't, I, I can't go back to everybody and say, can you send me your address? So if you have sent me a message via email or via uh IG, then just go back and send me your address. And someone mentioned like not wanting me to send them seeds because of postage, because of envelopes. I'm fine with that. Like you all give to me just by watching my videos. And so I, I enjoy, I want to share with you all. Um, I just don't have the time to go back and ask for addresses. So if you want seeds, you already sent me a message. I'm going to also put my email here because people were saying they couldn't find my email, um, which I know it's somewhere on YouTube because people were finding it, but I will put it right here on the screen. If you are interested in getting some seeds, loofah seeds is what I was sending out. Go ahead and email me or hit me up on IG and I will send them to you because again, um, yeah, like the stamps were like $60 for hundred. The envelopes weren't expensive. I don't mind sharing with y'all because again, every time you sit down to watch a video and you watch it through or you watch one of the ads, that's giving back to me. Um, and I enjoy doing what I'm doing over here. I very much appreciate every time you watch a video. So with that being said, I'm going to get into what I'm growing for 2024. Okay. So, uh, I don't have these in any kind of order whatsoever, but we are going to talk about them. So, this may be a little long. This video may be a little long. Go ahead and pause. Go do something else if you need to. Come on back or just sit down with me. Um, get you a cup of coffee. I left my coffee and my water in the back. Somebody going to have to bring that to me eventually. <laughs> but, all right. We're going to start here. Um, and it looks like these are flowers, so they are in some kind of order because when I picked them out, um, you know, they were all in the same container together. The chirping, those are the baby quail, but I'll check on them in a minute. So, as always, as always, I'm going to be doing nasturtiums. These are Alaska nasturtiums, 
And I absolutely love nasturtiums, y'all. I eat them. Um, they have a spicy taste and they are also very pretty. They can also be like a trap crop. A lot of pests like them, um, but they're also just very beautiful. And I eat them and they say like the seeds, you can use them as capers. I think they call them like the poor man's caper or something like that. I have not tried that, but the flowers themselves, I will put them in eggs. Um, I will put them in salads. I really, I'll just eat them straight out of the garden sometimes. They are very, very, very delicious. Then I have some milkweed. I got these from a seed swap a while ago over on IG on uh, Chefs Who Grow. She does a seed swap and that's where I got these from. And I think that milkweed is so, is so pretty. So this is milkweed, um, common milkweed, and this is a butterfly milkweed. And so it's very good for the pollinators. And just in general, I think it's a very pretty plant. And then we have sunflowers. And so I don't grow a ton of sunflowers. I don't, but there are three varieties that I really like. One is the uh, teddy bear sunflower. They are so cute. I mean, just like really, really cute sunflowers. Um, and they don't grow really tall. The spot focus is all the way in the way. They don't grow really tall, but they're like really short, bushy uh, sunflowers and they're very pretty. So I like to put these in the beds. So you get a little bit of sunflower, a little bit of, you know, flower in the bed, some color in the bed and the the pollinators love it. The birds and, and the bees and the, everything loves them. <laughs> <laughs> this is not what I thought it was. This is a dwarf sunflower and I actually use this in the in the hydroponics growing system. But what I thought it was was a mammoth sunflower. That's what I'll be growing. The mammoth sunflowers get so big. If you were here last year, you remember the one that I actually got out of the compost pile. They get huge and they get really tall. And if you want to save it for sunflower seeds, they give you a lot of sunflower seeds, which I do plan to do this year. Not sure how I'm going to get to the top of that plant. <laughs> um, to cover it so that the birds don't eat it, but I definitely plan to do it. And then this is a black Russian sunflower. And so I don't really, I like the color. I don't try to save the seeds from these, but I do like the color when they grow. Then we're gonna grow some Shasta daisies. So I had two of these in my garden um, last year. Only one seemed to thrive well, but they were very pretty. And so I want more of these um, out in the garden this year. And then foxgloves. So I did foxgloves last year. And so I want more of these. They were very, very pretty flowers. Scabiosa. So I like to bring cut flowers in during the year. Like I like to have flowers inside the house during the year. And Scabiosa is a beautiful little circle. And I just think it's so pretty in a uh, bouquet. When I bring them in the house, those are gonna be a part of my cut flower section. And not really a section, cause I'm planning to mix my flowers all throughout the garden this year. Just because my flower bed is not doing that well. And I'm really thinking I'm just gonna scatter some stuff out there and see what happens. We'll see. <laughs> and then we have some dahlias. These are from Kazi Town. She does very pretty dahlias. Like she has the big fluffy ones. She does a mix of them. I need to, I'm hopeful that I have not missed her sale this year uh, because she has very pretty things, but she has limited supply. So I need to make sure I go over there. Gumfrena, also just a pretty little cut flower option. The blue butterfly peas. I really like these. They're very pretty on a trellis and they also can turn your drink like to a blue color. Doesn't have any taste to it, but it's, it's very pretty. Um, the Kilimanjaro white marigolds absolutely beautiful i mean they are they're very pretty marigolds and so i want them again in my garden and i definitely do marigolds all throughout the beds because they are said to keep pests away um and i definitely grow them with my tomatoes and things like that I don't know if it makes a big difference um, because my garden's ecosystem is growing every year. I'm so excited about that. It is growing every year. Like when tomato hornworms come, when they come, they, they don't even come that early anymore. I normally notice that the wasps get them. Um, last year when they came, they came. <laughs> I was out of town for quite a few like weeks 
with my like I was coming in but then leaving back out and so they came <laughs> uh, we have some marigolds here a pretty little orange and yellow mix um, it's a mixed color burpees best marigolds I love marigolds oh there goes my sunflowers the mammoth sunflowers I got those from kids seed co they grow huge and they give you a good amount of sunflower seeds if you are interested in that and then of course my pretty little zinnia mix I am doing several zinnias it looks like four first we have a candy cane mix and that's from burpee they were so pretty um, well they look very pretty on this packet I had planted them last year but if you were here last year you remember that my that my zinnias didn't do very well because I didn't take care of my starts but I'm gonna do much better this year and like I said I'm thinking what Vivor sent me is gonna really help and then I have a zinnia big mix those are from Kids Seed Co those were very pretty I've grown those successfully a cupid mix those are from Baker's Creek and these probably gonna be my best and the thing I want to see the most are these green envy I think they are so 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 pretty I love it and then a, a plant that I thought like when I saw it in other people's garden like on YouTube I was like it's not that cute not that pretty but listen, when you see it in person, and I grew it on a trellis and kind of flattened it out. I can't remember the name. They do it with trees. But I kind of flattened the leaves on the trellis. Well, not the leaves, the branches on the trellis. And it was the prettiest display. And that's going to be Love Lies Bleeding Amaranth. I mean, just beautiful. Um, and you can use the seeds. You use it like quinoa, I believe they say. You can also use it as like a grain. So I'm very excited to grow these. Then we're down to our calendula. We have a pink sunrise, which was absolutely beautiful. I did not want to even harvest these last year because they were so pretty. Um, but if you deadhead calendula, and when I say deadhead, you just pull off the ones that are dying, um, more will grow. And we have our snow princess calendula, a beautiful yellow and red one. And so I like these to save for like making salves and stuff. I have not successfully like made one that worked well with my skin, but I'm going to try more um, this year because it's really just making sure you have the balance that you should. And I am positive that there is a recipe out there that would tell me that. Um, and this year I'm going to actually try and use that recipe. <laughs> All right, let's get into some tomatoes, y'all. We about to get into some tomatoes and peppers. Um, and I did do an order with some cherry tomatoes in it. And so um, I don't have those yet. But once they get here, I'll absolutely show you what they are. I'm very much excited about growing a lot more paste tomatoes this year. Because guess what I did, y'all? So I don't know if y'all like me. But when you try new things, you like, oh my goodness. I was <laughs> I was scared to use my canned stuff. Because I was like, what if I didn't do it right? Y'all saw my canning video. I'll link it if you didn't see it. <laughs> I'm new to canning. So I was like, I, I did all of that canning. And I had not used any of that stuff, right? The other night, though, I'm like, I want to make spaghetti. Realized I don't have any spaghetti sauce from the store. <sighs> So I go downstairs, I look at my, I look at my canned stuff and I'm like, it looks fine. There is no anything at the top. I'm going to use it. And so I used my spaghetti sauce last week and I was very, very proud of myself. We're still alive. We're still alive. So I think I did. I think I did it right. So I'm very much excited to grow more paste tomatoes this year um, and I want to make you know salsas and I want to make more sauces and paste and things like that so first we're going to start with the paste tomatoes and I will be growing more paste plants than I will of each variety of the slicers because the slicers can be used for for tomato sauce too you know it's not that you can't have to cook them down a little bit longer but I want to grow more paste so Amish paste has always been a good one for me I've always successfully grown Amish paste and these are from Southern Exposure Seed Exchange so I'm very much wanting to try these. Um, well, not try them. Wanting to grow them. 
Um, they are indeterminate, so they will grow, you know, as far as you can let them grow. And then, of course, you're going to want to go ahead and stake them because they are indeterminate. So when you, when you have an indeterminate variety, you're going to need a stake or you're going to need a trellis. They can absolutely just go all over the ground, but tomatoes, most tomatoes, get subjected to disease very easily, even if they aren't on the ground. If they're too close to each other, they get disease. <laughs> <laughs> especially in a humid climate like mine. Other paste tomato that I'm going to do, it's an Ace 55, and this is a paste tomato as well. I think that they were really prolific last year, but I feel like my plants probably um, got a little diseased early. So this will be one of the one of the tomatoes that I will make sure I succession. So I will start more in June or July uh, because in my area, tomatoes will go right up until your first frost. Will they grow as fast? No. Will they taste as good? Probably not, but they will grow. So we're going to try these Sheboygans again this year, y'all. If you were here last year, you know my Sheboygan plants, they just died out so fast. When it got too hot and when I wasn't around to baby them, I mean literally all the plants died at one time. <laughs> I am so sorry about the quail. I won't be planting as many Sheboygans as the other ones because I don't want them to take up a whole bunch of space and the plant die quickly. Then the last thing is going to be the San Marzano. And people talk about the San Marzano all the time. And they were very prolific for me last year. And they were absolutely growing right up until fall. The next thing are the cherry tomatoes. We're not doing a whole bunch of cherry tomatoes. We're really just doing the ones that I really like. And there was one that everybody was telling me about last year. I planted it and I don't think I tasted it one. So definitely have to give that another try because everybody was saying how good they were. But anywho, we're going to do the sun gold as always. So sun gold is a orange, a small orange cherry tomato and it is sweet like candy y'all. It's one of the sweetest tomatoes I have ever tasted. If you've been watching gardening videos, most people talk about the sun goals because they are absolutely delicious. This is the one everyone told me about and I, I purchased it and I tried it but I was not successful in growing it. It's an Isis candy cherry. So we're going to try this again. I think that I'm going to try to start at least four plants. If I'm, if I'm lucky, we will get two that will survive. And then I have other people. So listen, y'all, we're going to get back to it. There are so many people like around me who are like, they want to start gardening. I ran into my son's uh, sister today and she was like, I was going to text you or call you or something. She said, she was like, because I'm thinking about starting a garden. I was so excited. I was like, well, call me, call me. <laughs> Because <laughs> I want to show everybody how to garden. I really do. I love it. Um, The Cherry Black. So I got these from Seeds Now. And so these are a cherry tomato. And they are very sweet. Not nearly as sweet as the Sun Gold. But I love the taste of these. And then you have the Green Zebra. Like I really like these tomatoes. So they are a bit more tangy in my, in my opinion. Um, it says that they're sweet, not acidic, well-balanced flavor, and they are crack resistant. So they were a little tangy to me, but I like tangy. Not acid acidic, but I do like tangy. They were a little tangy. Here's another one that so many people grow. I have not been able to successfully grow a trust like that since I started gardening, but I'm not giving up. <laughs> so we're basically growing prolific cherry tomatoes or cherry tomatoes that I really like. Um, and the last one is Brad's Atomic Grape. And I got these from a seed swap, but I love Brad's Atomic Grape. I think it's delicious. And then I have a friend whose mother really, really enjoys them. And I did order some more just because we only have five seeds left in here. You remember my last video, I said that there was a tomato and I was like, I, I just feel like it's supposed to be a prettier tomato. <laughs> <laughs> it was the Black Beauty. And so we're absolutely growing Black Beauty again. This is one that you all told me about last year. The chirping. I really hope the chirping is not bothering y'all. There's really nothing I can do about it. <laughs> they're in the house and they're, I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. The next one is Dr. Weich's. Very delicious tomato. Learned about this tomato over um, Jess over at Roots and Refuge. She calls it 
Dr. Witchies. I say Weich because my friend's last name is Weich and that's how it's spelled. Um, so I have Dr. Weich's tomato. It's an orange one. Again, I don't like acidic tomatoes. And so most of my slicers are going to be either orange or yellow or some other color other than red because most red tomatoes are acidic and I don't like acidic. Um, pineapple. Oh my goodness, y'all. Let me tell you about how big these tomatoes get. They get huge and they're just a beautiful tomato. I got these seeds from Botanical Interest. Um, and so, yeah, they are so pretty. They are absolutely delicious. Like I like these on a bacon and tomato sandwich in the summer. I mean, just delicious. This is a Brandywine Yellow. And I love that one too. It tastes really, really good. It's, um, I'm trying to think of what flavor you get from it. Like that one is also a little tangy. So you have a little bit of acidity in this one too, but also a little tangy. And I do like them. Um, they're also, to me, I feel like they had a good amount of gel in them as well. And I do like a good tomato with a lot of gel, well, a good amount of gel in it. I feel like this was a free seed from Kids Seed Co. I don't remember ordering it, but it's a new one. And so I'm willing to give it a chance. It is a uh, Marmande Garnier Rogue. I am definitely saying all of that wrong. I'm saying that all wrong. But let me just put it up here and you can choose <laughs> to maybe try to grow it or not. Because I know I'm saying it wrong. And that's okay. That's okay. Now the other quail are hollering. Um, it says it's a big and tasty French heirloom variety that provi produces prolifically with fruits routinely over 1.5 pounds. Yumsville. <laughs> okay? Sounds so good to me. These, this is a beef steak, a pink beef steak. The color is amazing. Like, I grew it last year and the color was beautiful. I cannot say that I remember what it tastes like. But um, yeah, it, it was a very, very pretty tomato. And then of course my absolute fave, my absolute fave. Now the, now the dryer is finishing up. What are we doing in here today? <laughs> the Cherokee purple. I love a Cherokee purple tomato. Like I, it is my absolute favorite tomato. It's a purple, purple tomato, um, well, purple burgundy color tomato, um, and it has a smoky flavor. Like, I absolutely love it. This is my favorite slicer tomato. This is a white tonsil, and I got this as a free seed from Baker Creek, but also delicious. Um, I think that they had a very mild flavor, which makes sense, you know, it's a white tomato. But I thought it had a very mild flavor. Also goes really well on a bacon and tomato sandwich. <laughs> And this is a great white, and that's from Johnny's Seed. Uh, when I was on the search for white tomatoes, I was kind of struggling. And those were the two that I, well, the great white is one that I found. And then the other one was a free seed, which helped me. It's so much going on in here. <laughs> Let's see about that stopping. That was a that was a white tomato variety that I actually ended up liking. And then we have a Heritage Rainbow Mix. And so that's just a bunch of different tomatoes in there, but they're all, um, you know, rainbow, different colored things like that. And so I just like growing them. It's kind of like a surprise. Oh, I have a yellow beef steak as well. I don't know if I told y'all that already, but a yellow beef steak. Oh, this is a really good one. The hillbilly, like very large tomatoes and they're orange. Not as much gel in them, but they're all there, but they are very delicious. They're very good. It says low in acidity. We like that. And it says it has amazing fruity flavor. So I, I did, I did like those. The next thing we're going to grow is a Paul Robeson. So listen, the Paul Robeson's died out on me too last year. <laughs> During that time frame where I was gone for almost two weeks and I only came home for a couple of days in between. Yeah, the Paul Robeson clucked out just like the Sheboygans, but I'm giving it another chance because I'm pretty sure I did enjoy the taste of those. On to peppers. So peppers, if you remember I said I want a lot of peppers because I want to make a lot of the pepper powder. So we are going with some jalapenos. 
which everyone knows what a jalapeno tastes like. But also, if they grow big enough, you can make some of the most delicious jalapeno poppers out of them. Um, also, I never made, I never made fire cider this year and I wanted to. And so I want to make sure that I have the peppers that I need, which is why I'm also growing a cayenne pepper. We do not eat a lot of hot peppers. I made a lot of hot pepper powder. It is still up there in the cabinet because we don't eat a lot of hot peppers. <laughs> oh, and this is one I got this year. I ordered um, from Kids Seed Co. It's called Morosky Sweet Pepper. The color is what drew me to it. I think it's such a pretty color. Uh, purple is my favorite color. I don't know if it's purple. Yeah, it's a beautiful purple heirloom. Um, the plants and fruits are very ornamental. So they're supposed to be really pretty, but also edible. This is a fire ozone paprika. So I've never grown it, but I thought it was very pretty. And I use my peppers for freezing as well. So, and I like sweet peppers way more than I like green peppers and way more than I like hot peppers. So of course, it's gonna be green from the beginning anyway. So if I need a green pepper, I could just pull one of these peppers off of the plant because that's how peppers start. <laughs> and then an orange lasia. We all know I don't know how to say that. I haven't learned how to say it yet. <laughs> but I'm gonna be growing one of those. And the Ancho Gran um, peppers, it's a poblano pepper. And they were really good last year. Got up to a nice size too. I did mostly um, blistered them in a pan and ate them that way. But there was a sweetness to them as well as a tartness. So I really did like those. Then I have Jimmy Nardello. These I saved from my own seed um, in 2023. So last year I saved these. And they were, they were very good. Jimmy Nardello are like really sweet peppers. Um, they're skinny and long, but very good peppers. And I have the Jimmy Nardello that I ordered. And so I'm not sure that my seeds didn't get cross-pollinated. So that is why we're going to plant the ones that I ordered or I had from last year and my own to see what happens. And then my absolute favorite, if you've been here for a while, you know they're my absolute favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? That's a shishito pepper. I mean, prolific and just delicious. All you got to do is put them in a pan with a little bit of oil and then put whatever seasoning that you want afterwards. I mean, just a delicious, delicious pepper for snacking. Uh, next thing I'm going to plant is habanadas. And people kept telling me last year that they thought that they were like habaneros or it was another one. But those are hot. I don't prefer hot peppers. These do resemble those peppers. Um, and then I think a sugar rush, and I think sugar rush are hot peppers. So these are habanadas, and it was a very prolific plant. Very, very, very prolific plant. Then we have the golden marconi that I saved from my own seed. I don't remember when I saved it. It may have been um, last year, but I did not. I failed to write the date on it. Um, but then I have another golden marconi. That's what they look like. Super sweet pepper and they get really big. And of course you can never not do banana peppers. <laughs> I like them for pickling. Um, and then we have a few plebano peppers that I saved from my own seed. So those are the peppers, tomatoes, and flowers that I'm planning to grow this year. Um, and I cannot wait y'all. I won't be starting any of this stuff until like early March just because I'm not starting with my last frost date uh, based off my last frost date. Like I said, I am starting based off when I plan to plant them. And I did this last year, worked out well, maybe got my um, harvest a little bit later than others around me, which is fine because I didn't have to baby them plants all year. <laughs> Next thing is the one eggplant variety that I really like. Um, I don't like the larger eggplant. So I always plant the skinny ones. So this is a long purple variety. And I got those from Seeds Now. And that's those are the, literally the only eggplants I'm planting because they're the only eggplants I really like. <laughs> and now on to the beans. I love beans. I preserved a lot of beans last year. Very proud of myself for that because I love to grow. I love to eat fresh green beans. And even if I froze them, they were still fresh at a point and they came right out my backyard. So we will definitely not, well, 
We're going to try Kentucky Wonder again. We're going to try them again. I was not a fan. But then I saw someone in the comment, and if I did not answer you, I apologize. But I did see your comment, and I did use your comment. Um, someone in the in the comment said that they didn't like them for, like, fresh eating, but they did like them for dried beans. So, I think I'm going to try Kentucky Wonder for dried beans. These are so pretty, and I think they taste so delicious out of the garden. Um, it's the Top Notch Golden. So it's a yellow bean and it actually stays yellow when you cook it. And um, I think that's also really pretty. And then a royal burgundy and that does not stay burgundy when you cook it, it turns green. And a oriental yard long bean. Just really cool to grow. My last but not least, but my also my favorite is a purple potted pole bean. I always have purple potted pole beans in my garden. And so there are bush beans and there are pole beans. If you get a variety that says pole, you're gonna need a trellis, something for it to grow up. So if you get something that says pole bean or runner bean, you're gonna need a trellis. If you get something that says bush bean, then it's gonna grow like a bush and you don't need to trellis those. We are at cucumbers, I ordered some Armenian long cucumbers because I really want to try those. I'm going to do a straight eight. This is from the Dollar Tree. National pickling. Because I did pickle last year and then I noticed where people were saying or reading and watching other videos that some pickles are better for pickling than others. So I got one that had the word pickling in it. <laughs> and therefore I'm pretty sure that it would be good for pickling. Oh, completely forgot. I wanted to try tomatillos again. So tomatillos, you need at least two plants in order to get the tomatillo. And I have not successfully ever gotten two plants, but I'm still going to try again. <laughs> a jelly melon. Have not successfully grown a jelly melon. You know what I have successfully grown? That's the jelly melon and the variety I'm planning to try. I, I want to try it. Do I think I'm going to like it? I don't know, but I do want to try it. You know what I successfully grew, and I hope I never successfully grow it again? <laughs> a bitter melon. Oh my God, it was so awful. Bitter melon is exactly what it was. It was very, very bitter. I've told the story here before, and what I, I was like, I grew the wrong thing. This is poison. I am about to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> but I hear it's very healthy for you. I hear that it's very good if you have diabetes, those kind of things. But I just can't. I just can't. I think it's used in Asian cooking. But, oh, Lord. And then they say that it's kind of hard to grow. I didn't have a problem with growing it. It took a long time to produce. But, oh, my goodness, it was disgusting. <laughs> um, I've never grown these. I got them a while ago from Seeds Now. But it's a melon. But. It's called um, Armel, Armor, mm, Amarello, Amarello Oro. Um, so we're going to try those. My daughter loves melons. I do not eat melons, but she absolutely loves them. Then I have a mini sugar cantaloupe. And I got these from a seed swap a while ago. I thought the packaging was so cute on that. Um, so yeah, I got these from a seed swap in 2020. So when I first started gardening and I found the seed swap over on IG, the same one I was telling you about. Like I said, I was very heavy in that community for a while, but then I kind of fell off. Um, and then I'm going to try the Koozie Gourd. I have never grown them before, but I think they're very, very cool looking. I grow a lot of things because they're cool looking, not knowing if I will or will not eat them, which is how I ended up growing that, that bit of melon because it was cool looking. Never again. <laughs> All right, let's see. We're going to do a Tigger melon. Very, very ar aromatic, I think is the word. Um, My daughter ate it and I tasted it. It wasn't very sweet to me, but it was very aromatic. If you smelt it, like if you put it up to you, you would have thought it was going to be very sweet. It was not, but my daughter did love it. And I don't like melons anyway, so I don't think I would have been a good, the best person. <laughs> <laughs> to ask was was it good but you know it is what it is and then the last one we're going to do is the minnesota midget which grows really well for me in my area i never had a problem growing it so that's normally my most successful melon is the minnesota midget um and now we're off to squash 
So, of course, we know I love a good tromboncino squash. So, we'll be growing that. And tromboncino squash, as I understand it, I'm trying to make sure y'all could see what I said that was. It's the lighting. There we go. Tromboncino squash. So, tromboncino squash, as I understand it, and I have never actually let it go that long because I'm not a... Um, butternut squash lover but if you let it stay long enough and cure on the vine um, it will taste more like uh, butternut squash than actual squash that you know like you put in the pan and saute with some onions they're just really cool to grow too like they're one of the things that I, I grow because it's cool to grow also when you get one squash you're getting a lot of food out of that one squash so there's that too and of course we're gonna try this zucchini again y'all <laughs> try this zucchini again this is the Black Beauty one, so we're gonna, we're gonna see what we can do. The squash vine boys be killing me, but we're gonna see what we can do. And then my favorite, 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 and I don't even eat this kind of squash. Like the ones that's not like your regular everyday squash, the ones that seem to be winter squash-ish. I don't even eat a lot of those, but y'all, y'all already know. This honey boat delicata that I talk about every year that I did not successfully grow, but thank God a friend of mine grew it because I got to have me some honey boat squash last year. That's it. That's it. Try this. It's like a sweet potato. Like you can just put it in the oven with a little bit of butter and, and roast it. Oh, it's so good. You got to try it. You got to try it. I absolutely love it. And just remember... I am not a eater of those kinds of squash, but they are absolutely delicious. <laughs> All right, let's get into the medicinals. Let's get into the medicinals because I very much want to learn how to use medicinals this year. I want to get them established in my garden this year and I cannot wait to try them. I have some golden rod, which I hear is good medicinally. And if you can see, I've written on some of these packages. That's also a way that I keep myself organized so I'll know when I'm supposed to be planting things too. I have so many ways that I organize myself. Um, milk thistle. A friend of mine really loves milk thistle. She takes it in pill form, like capsules that she got from the store. So I really want to grow these because if I can give her something uh, medicinal that grew in our area, I think it would be amazing. So I'm growing these for her, but I'm also going to look it up to see like how it helps. It could help me. Fever few already growing in the garden, but I would like a little more of it. Um, and so this is actually, it's, it's in his name, fever few. Like they say that it's good for fevers. My camera is getting hot. Okay, so we back. True hyssop, that's another one that I want to try. I need to do my research. I'm not gonna pretend like I know much, you know, about medicinals. I just know that I want to start using them. So I want to have an apothecary. <laughs> uh now my now my memory card is filling up, y'all. Cause because what is happening? I think we got a few minutes. Wormwood, which is Sweet Anna or Annie. Sweet Annie. Uh, yarrow. Honestly, just think yarrow is a beautiful plant, but it can be used medicinally as well. Okay, we're back. <laughs> and we're back. Um, okay, I think we were at Mugwort. Verbenum. Um, some St. John's Wort. Uh, soapwort. Um, plantain. Um, and then stinging nettle, lovage, that's echinacea, my roselle. Those are the things that I'm going to be growing. And of course, I'm growing the normal herbs too. Like all of these are basil. Oh, you know what? I'm going to give fennel a try this year too. That's from Cedra Seeds. But these are all basil. So I have a dark black opal basil. Uh, I have a lemon basil, which I never can get to uh, actual maturity. They they have flowered on me very early every year. So we're going to try it again because they smell really good. I imagine it tastes really good too. Some holy basil or holy Tulsi, however you want to say it, has a licorice taste. I'm not a fan of licorice, but I do like, um, I do like the smell of it, but I'm probably not going to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have a sweet basil or a Genovese basil that I'm going to grow to. Um, and then a large Italian leaf basil. 
So that's what I'm growing this year. And I cannot wait to get started. And when I say I can't wait to get started, I can wait enough that I'm not gonna have to baby plants all year, all season. <laughs> <laughs> but when I say I can't wait, I'm just ready to get started, ready to get close to planting out time. And, and that is that is what I cannot wait for. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to visit me over on Instagram where I post about the things going on in the garden almost every day. Bye, y'all.